Well, good morning, K1. We are going to have an awesome time this morning. I just want to welcome you. My name is Pastor Jenna. I'm the spiritual formation pastor here. Uh, and we're so glad that you're here to worship with us today because uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we at K1 have a vision, and it roots everything that we do. We want to help people come to know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and then go and live it out. And when we say that this roots everything we do, we mean that. This is the vision that our kids use. This is the vision that our teens use because we believe that it is God's promises and invitation to us. And so today, you may be able to tell our service is going to be a little bit different because our kids are going to lead us through an opportunity to come to know God, either for the first time or in a deeper way. And the message that they're going to share with us today has the opportunity to help us find freedom. They understand that their God purpose is to expand the kingdom of God, and that's what they're doing here today by using their unique gifts. And I'm telling you, these kids are living it out. They're talking to their friends. They're talking to their teachers. So it's an honor for them to lead us today. So we're going to have a really awesome morning. I do want to just give you a couple announcements. Um, we are moving back to one service starting next week. Um, so through January, January 21st, we'll go back to our two services. But starting next week, we will be meeting at 1045 uh, for the next few weeks. And then we just want to invite you to our Christmas Eve service, which is on Sunday at 1045. So hopefully you'll join us for that. This morning, before we get into the big festivities, we are going to have a couple baby dedications. So those who are dedicating their babies, if you and your families want to work your way forward, we will move into that. Since our children are leading us today in worship, we thought it was only fitting to also invite families today to dedicate their children to the Lord. Today we have Natalie Seedenholm and we have Rhett Sikma. So parents, and we have these great fa extended families here with us today too. This is exciting. Parents, I want to remind you that today, as you dedicate your children to the Lord, this is really your commitment, not theirs. And you're committing today that you're going to live your life as a follower of Jesus Christ and that you will do everything you can to disciple your children to know Jesus. And I'm going to ask you four questions, and at the end of that, if that is your desire today, please answer, I will. Parents, will you model what it looks like before your children to live a life that's a follower of Jesus? Will you do it when your children are watching you, but especially when they're not watching you? Will you be consistent? Will you teach your children the ways of God in your home and on your journey? When you end the day, and when you start a new day, will God's truth be the fabric of your home? Will you protect your children from the things that desire to steal, kill, and destroy their minds and their hearts, even when it requires you to make tough decisions and change your lifestyles? And will you commit to pray for your children all the days of your life? Because being a parent never ends. If this is the desires of your heart today, please answer I will. And we have this great extended family on both sides today. And thank you so much for being here and your encouragement and just standing here with these babies and these parents. And if it's your desire today and your willingness as the support family to live a life that is pleasing to Christ and to support these parents and encouragement and to be there for them and to pray for them, will you answer, I will? Thank you. And K1, if this is your home church, then these little children belong to your tribe. And if you're willing today to say that I will do whatever it takes to make sure that this church provides for these children to know Christ and to be followers of Christ, and I will live my life personally as an encouragement to these parents and a model of discipleship, please answer, I will. Thank you. So first we have today Natalie Tamra Seedenholm. And... Uh, Natalie is being dedicated by her parents, um, and Josh and Emily, and she's also joined here by her big brother, Lucas. Hey, Lucas. I remember when we dedicated you, buddy. Yeah, you were tiny, too, one time. Absolutely. So Natalie was born on May 14th, 2023, and her middle name, uh, Tamara, is named after her grandmother, Tamara Smith, who is now in heaven. Um, 
supporting her today are lots of aunts and uncles and grandparents and cousins. So let's dedicate this little girl. Come here. Natalie Tamara Sedenholm, I dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Jesus, we know that this little girl was fearfully and wonderfully made, and we praise you for that. You knew her before she was ever thought of by anybody else. And today, Jesus, we pray for her mind, that she will have the mind of Christ, and that she will grow in wisdom and knowledge to know you and to love you. We pray for her heart. We pray, Jesus, that she will follow your ways, that she will grow in grace and in love. We pray, Jesus, for her feet, that they will walk and stand on the rock and that they will follow you, and that her feet will bring good news to the world. And we pray, Jesus, for her hands, that she will lift up holy hands in worship, even as a small child, and that her hands will be used to serve you and serve others. We praise you for this little girl. We pray for her parents, her brother, and we thank you for who she is. In Jesus' name, amen. And here we have Rhett. William Sigma, and he was born April 7, 2023. He shares the same middle name as Joe's father, uh, Gary, who also passed away and is in heaven today. And Gary passed away when Joe was a child, and so he carries that middle name on. Standing with him today is an army, and they're not even all up here. Half of them are still seated in the back, okay? So um, he's got a great support system around him as well. So let's dedicate this beautiful boy to Jesus Christ, okay? Rhett William Sigma, we dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father Jesus, we just thank you so much, Father God, for this little boy. We pray that early on his life will know who you are. We pray for his heart, that his heart will know you early in life and fall in love with you. And that only will his heart love you, but love others. We pray, Jesus, for his mind, that he would have the mind of Christ. We pray, God, that you will protect his mind and that he will grow in all wisdom and all knowledge. We pray, Jesus, for his feet, that he will bring good news and that he will walk in the paths of light and love and life. And, Jesus, we pray for his hands that he will build the church. And that he will use his hands, God, and find the joy of serving. We dedicate this little boy to you. And we thank you for his life. Be with his parents, God, and bless them. Amen. Thank you.
Good morning, friends, up and at them. The inn is nearly filled with capacity, and there is work to do. <laughs> Rise and shine, my fellow world changers. There's just something about today. I feel it in my bones. It's a beautiful day, and we get to shine. <clears throat> Not that I don't agree with you, it's just my body isn't quite caught up with your enthusiasm. Oh, you beastly Magnus, get that body into gear. There's not a minute to wait. I'm not sure my eyes are awake yet. Well, my eyes are, and you look marvelous. John Luke, we better get to the stables. Our animal friends will be hungry right about now. I'm pretty hungry, too. Well, thanks to your early rising friend, breakfast is ready and waiting. Star got up early, cooked breakfast, <coughs> and the table. Let's grab some to go, Gertie. The animal scientists are about to revolt, and you know, they really need a stable diet. <laughs> <laughs> ha! But wait, before we go on about our chores, I just want to take a minute and celebrate! What's to celebrate? That we're orphans? It's just another day in Bethlehem? And who is this ray of sunshine? Everyone, this is our newest guest. We found him wandering in town last night and invited him in. That's how we all got here. Trixie had room we were in, and now we're one big, happy family. Going to stay with us for a while? Only because I assumed it would be less noisy than the streets. Well, my slightly grumpy new friend, I'm glad that you can be here today, too, because... Is she always this perky? <laughs> yes, sometimes even more so. Great. Today is my one-year anniversary of being here at the Inn of Bethlehem with you fine people. Has it been a year already, Star? Yep, I just want to take a minute to appreciate everything and everyone. Boop has made this past year so special. Did she just boop your head? She does that. You'll be used to it. Not sure about that. <laughs> and what's so special about being here in Bethlehem? So many things.
I'm off to the stables. Me too. Time to balance the books. After saving up these past few years, I've finally been able to upgrade my abacus. It's an A+. What a technological wonder. Who could have known it was possible to invent something so advanced? OK, my sparkly friends, I'm raring to go. I'll cover the chicken desk. I'll go feed my doll. Where are you going? Where are you going, Volunteer Blake? Uh, I'm gonna feed my doll, too. You have a doll, too? I can introduce her to my doll, Esmeralda, and they can be friends. Sorry, kids. I, you know, just whatever. You know, Blake, serving at the end is one of the ways we orphans of Bethlehem can really make a difference. Magnus is right. I don't think the Lord saves us to stay. Then people got love. Why don't you check out Gertie's animals in the stable? She'll tell you all about that. Whatever. Oh, so you finally found that. Good morning, my friends. Are morning. you hungry? <coughs> Here you go, some nice, nutritious food. And I forgot you, chickens. Don't I feel sheepish? Oh, there now, eat up. I know it's going to be a busy day here in Bethlehem. I'm sure you'll make some new friends when more people arrive at the inn for the census with their animals. They sent me out here to help. I followed the smell. <laughs> Everyone, I'd like you to meet our new friend, Blake. Blake, meet our very oh-so-talented animal friends. Talented? I don't think they do tricks. Well, they don't, but they sing. Uh, well, sing might be a little bit of a stretch. Nope, they definitely sing. Uh, it's a moving experience. <laughs> I call them from farm to stable. Really? Yep. <laughs> Can you hear it? I guess. Beautiful. Friends, let's show them what you've got.
sent me out here to help with the check and desk. I just couldn't listen to one more minute of animal singing. Ooh, did Gertie hear you were animal fire? She loves them. If I'm being honest, to me it just sounds like animals. But I respect her dedication. Only two rooms left. The numbers are up 33% from last year. This census sure has helped our business, and the day has been flying by. Oh, and here come the next customers. I'll show you the rope flake. Please, no. Oh, don't Welcome to the end of Bethlehem. We are so happy that you've chosen to stay with us today. Third door on your left. Only one room left. This place is really hopping. It's like everyone is here to celebrate my one year anniversary. <laughs> oh, and here come two more. Welcome, friends. This is your lucky day. Tell them why, Blake. Uh, um. Because this is our last room. Isn't that right, Blake? Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't care. I hate to micromanage Blakely. May I call no. you Blakely? I'm done. But you could use a little more oomph when you talk to the customers. Try adding more drama to make every sentence an announcement. Here's your chance. Except, wait, we have no room, so... Welcome to the inn! We have no room! <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe a little less drama. No room? Please, we've been traveling all day, and as you can see, my wife can assume we cannot travel any farther. Oh my goodness, I can see that. Let me get her a chair. I am from the house in the line of David, and we have come from Nazareth to register for the census. We need a place to stay. Mary's about to have a very special baby. Babies are always special. I knew today was going to be extraordinary. You didn't know the half of it. Want to hear the story? I'm ready. Lay it on me. I could go for a story. The animals are all ready for bed. They're all fed and nestled in the hay. I don't want to do this. Gather round, everybody. Story time. Esmeralda's ready. What I'm about to tell you will be hard to believe, but I assure you that's the truth. Truth, truth. An angel came to me in a dream, and he said, Wait, an angel? Yeah, an angel. Okay, sorry, go on. I just wasn't expecting it to go that way. Tell me about it. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid, because the Holy Spirit's given her a son. So she will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins.
Trixie, and I run the Inn of Bethlehem. And I'm really sorry, but we don't have any more room left. I just don't know what to do. Everyone is his book up. Miss Trixie, I have an idea. If you guys would like, you can come stay in the stable with my amazing animals. Me and John Luke keep it pretty clean in there, and I can make sure that the animals behave really well. Plus, my animal choir could sing to you. Huh? That's very generous. Thank you. Follow us. Can you believe it? I knew today is going to be extraordinary. I've always had a certain way of when telling when the day is going to be incredible. I can tell the kids, you know. Don't you always think the day is going to be incredible? Well, yes. But it always is. Well, I got them settled in, but I don't think that baby's going to wait. So exciting. What a blessed day. Listen, Perky, you got to dial it down. I've been on my own for a while, and I can tell you, things are not as awesome as you think. What do you mean? This is an ordinary inn. Read the sign. This is an ordinary inn. It's not a special day. Those animals don't sing. And even though you think you have family here, you're still an orphan. Agree to disagree. Just saying, as soon as I can get some more money here, I'll be getting straight out of Bethlehem. some friends to surround you and tell you they should care about you. Come on, everybody, circle around. That's okay. I'm fine. I always am. Hey, what about those two people seeing angels? I mean, seriously, angels? Surely you can't believe them. Well, of course, I believe them. Fish bosh. Let's think logically, Blake. Both Mary and Joseph saw angels at different times and told them the same thing. What are the chances that two different people will see angels? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> We've just seen an angel. Hundreds of angels. It was terrifying. 
they told us a savior was to be born tonight. See someone else saw angels tonight. We sure did, they were everywhere. Let me give you the skinny. Ooh, I feel another story coming on. No. Man, they were just appearing left and right and it really psyched us out. And we were like, whoa. And they were just like, can you dig it? Dig what? We were just laughing in the field with our sheep like we always do when we saw a funky, groovy sight. We were bugging out because the glow and cool cat was booging on over to us. And I was like, dynamite! Glory to God. Right on. Rad. Can you believe it? This baby Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, right here. I've got to give him something, but I don't have anything to give. No one expects you to give anything. We're an orphan star, and also I want to sleep in my bed. Here, I want the baby to have my doll, Esmeralda. Consider it a gift for the kid. Here, I'd like to offer my new abacus. These are very generous gifts, thank you. How can we not offer everything to the Messiah, the king of the world?
this baby. God's forgotten us. He doesn't have time for people like us. Well, we all feel lonely sometimes. We all have times we feel sad. But we have felt the love of God through our family here at the inn, and now through this miracle. The Bible says that God has heard the cry of the people, and he will send the Messiah, and we just witnessed the birth. God has shown that he hasn't forgotten about us. You may be orphans, but we are a part of a family. God's family! And when you think about it, we're all really orphans grafted into the family of God. None of us have to be alone in this life because God has adopted us into his royal family. And we are his forever. <clears throat> How much he loves us.
Well, that was fun. And you are a rowdy church today. Goodness. Uh, I'm Leon Blanchett. I'm one of the children's pastors here, and I have the wonderful privilege of working with these great kids and serving with them. You know, in the midst of all the fun, I hope that you heard the message today. Uh, in fact, I hope that you heard the message as a sermon, because it was a unique sermon today for you to hear the good news of what God has done for us, particularly this time of the year, as we recognize that he sent his son so that we would no longer be orphans, that we could be adopted into his family. And I hope you have experienced that in your life. And if you have not, we would love to talk with you today and pray with you and, and help you to understand uh, in a deeper way the goodness of God in your life. We're really proud of these kids. You may not know this, but we set a kind of a record for a church uh, this year with our musical, and they uh, presented this three times, uh, Friday night and then twice this morning. So... So I'm sure we're all ready for naps, right? Yeah. You're welcome, parents. So uh, we just want to we, we wanna wish you just a wonderful Christmas that's not filled with all the stuff that we sometimes get sidetracked with, but really focusing on the wonderful gift that God has given to us through his son. Would you stand with me as we pray? Father, we're thankful that we can come to church and have fun as we celebrate the greatest gift that's ever been given, as we celebrate the gift of your son who came as a baby, lived a life showing us how we are to live, and then ultimately gave a sacrifice of his life for us. And we're thankful for that this morning, and we celebrate that. Thank you for these kids, for the work that you've done in their lives. Father, we know these are not just words that they are singing uh, to entertain us today, but the words come from their hearts because you have changed their lives. And we thank you that they have modeled for us this morning what it means to love you deeply. Thank you for our time together today. Bless us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 